Okay, let's uh, let's bring it in. Okay, let's serious it up just a little bit because yeah, this, this is a huge debate right now. Truly, should cell phones be banned at school? Ohio mm -hmm. Lieutenant Governor John Houston has been pushing this as a major issue for weeks now. The Lieutenant Governor held a roundtable with Ohio educators. Those school leaders said limiting smartphones in schools improved academics, school culture, and reduced disciplinary incidents. We're traveling the state, learning from the educators, and we're going to develop a, a statewide. Uh, policy that will share the best practices from schools around the state on how uh, to craft a policy, how to communicate it to parents in the community. Ohio House Bill 485 was recently introduced. If passed, it would require schools to create an internet safety policy, which would include limiting the use of cell phones during the school day. Houston says they're hoping to collect data and information which districts can access if the law passes. Now, our Chelsea Sick covered this story yesterday. She had people send in their thoughts on cell phones at school. We're going to check some of your responses to what Chelsea put out there. Yeah, uh, let's start with Bree, who says, if we follow the logic that school prepares you for the real world, no one is going to take it away from them in adulthood. They should be taught professional decorum with technology. Now, Daniel says, have the teachers have something the students can just put their phones in when entering the classroom. When the work is completed, they can have access to their phones again. You even see that kind of thing now at certain concerts because certain performers yes. will absolutely not let you come in with cell phones. Do you have what? What's the feel? What's the feel as a parent? I mean, I would love my son to not have I like and he's got one, sure. but he's only allowed to have it for emergency uses at school. So it stays in the backpack, at least it's supposed to. And if I ever hear it doesn't, son, and you're watching, you're in trouble. Um, <laughs> and it's not supposed to come out. But right. he's younger. So when they get older, I don't know how you police that. I mean, as, as somebody who has taught, we both have taught, I would like no phones to be available. Uh, I would like to let them not be using the phones because you want them focused. Correct. Unless they're using it as part of a curriculum. But I don't know how you police that. I, you know, I, I don't know. And then as a parent, if you want to have your child have a phone at school for emergency uses or to be able to get in touch with them, you know, how do you do that? Do you just say what well, can only be in the locker? I, I don't know. I love the idea, and I don't know how realistic it is that Daniel put out there, the idea of having a bag, a, a lockbox, whatever, not locking Something it up they drop probably. It in Something they just, they, they have to put it in there when they arrive in class. Yeah. And I, what's really interesting, I think it is, at this point, perhaps more a parental issue than it is a student issue. And the reason I'm saying that is what you said. Some parents, they, wa they want their kids to have the phone so they can get a hold of them anytime they want to get a hold of them. But in the middle of class, I, it should I, not, they I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, old man rant, I guess, coming. But I, I just, when it's class time, it's class time. And, and I get the argument that, you know, we're all grown ups and, you know, we have our phones and perhaps you should learn that when you're younger. My, my counter would be, I didn't have one when I was a kid and I turned out okay, or I can use my phone okay now. Um, and I would suggest that even adults don't have the best decorum uh, at this agreed. point for when, for when they're using phones. So perhaps the lesson of maybe don't have them out all the time is the lesson we all should learn a little bit more. Yeah, well, it'll be maybe. interesting to see how this evolves and how they would police it and how that's each, the key. And you, know, what, what, I mean, you yeah, keep saying about the police, you know, know. that's sort of the big, that's the big trick. Yeah, yeah. So we will, we will follow this and we will see. And something that I have been following. Radio is alive and well in the tri-state. <laughs> a local indie station is bringing back WOXY's Modern Rock 500 and putting on their own twist. I talked about this last year. Inhaler Radio announced the 2024 Indy 500. The music marathon will take place from May 20th and May uh, 27th. You might remember last year for WOXY radio host. They brought back the Modern Rock 500 to celebrate the 40th anniversary of WOXY. They said their success was all about listening to their audience. You know, because it was a smaller station and you had to seek it out, I think the people that tuned in found a sense of community with the DJs that were on there and would wind up going to the same small shows at Bogarts or Jockey Club or things like that. <laughs> Inhaler Radio says this event will be a passing of the baton for the 500 countdown. You can listen to Inhaler Radio on their website. We have a link at local12.com. And this may is... or may not be hearing moi as part of that. Yes. I say this is your world. This is, uh, you know, from a, from well, a previous life. Yes. Yeah, you, you, you sort of lived in that space. Yeah. How kind of cool is that to see the tradition carrying on? Wonderful, because they worked so hard on that last year. 
And, you know, I interned back in a long time ago yeah. uh, at WOXY. It was just an unbelievably cool place. Everybody was awesome. The music was awesome. It was something you can't even describe really how neat it was. And the fact that they were able to bring that back last year, now they're going to continue it again. It's something you really should listen to if you liked any kind of modern rock because it's going to go through all decades and, yeah. and, you know, the modern rock. So it'll be really neat. And I would love for our audience right now to sort of take a page out of what they were saying about listening to their audience. Yeah. That's what that's what we're trying to we're do trying. here. We we want you to tell us what's working. And don't get me wrong. If you're sitting there and like you just don't like this at all, then kind of like listening to that radio station wouldn't have been for you. This might not be yeah. for you, but for people who are enjoying this and having fun and you like a little bit of a, let's take a break from all the just horrible for a little bit. We, that, that's it. That's the kind of community I want to build right here. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So and, and you keep know it what? coming, keep it coming, keep it coming. Oh. It brings a little tear to my eye because yeah. part of the reason why I love WOXY was they build a community. I mean, that's what yeah. it was. Is people got, got together at concerts and they got to know the DJs and they, they you know, became a community. Of, so if we could do that here, that See? would be so awesome. See? Wonder Twin Powers. Activate. Thank you. Okay. Hey, a huge move in Tri-State Women's College Basketball. NKU now has a new women's basketball coach. Jeff Hans will leave Thomas More after 13 seasons to return to Norse Nation. Hans is the winningest coach in Thomas More women's basketball program history. He guided the Saints to eight conference regular season championships and 11 national tournament berths, plus much more. Hans spoke to Local 12 sports reporter Chris Reinkel about his new goals. Looking forward to the transition and looking forward to the, the opportunity here at, at NKU to build this and, and build back the, the winning and, and that culture. Thanks. Hans makes his return to Highland Heights after he served as both an assistant coach and graduate assistant under legendary head coach Nancy Winstall for five years in total at NKU. A familiar right. face, someone who obviously sure. knows Northern Kentucky very, very well. So congratulations, coach. We know great things are coming uh, for Norse Nation. Absolutely. I gotta love that. Well, we want to wish Aww. one of our viewers a very special birthday. Violet. Violet. Violet is 105 today. 105. 105. Now let me let me break that. We're gonna skip right to the grandchildren level here, okay? Because she has 14 grandchildren, 34 great grandchildren, <laughs> as well as at this point, it's listed as several great great grandchildren. Yes, and take a look at oh. this throwback photo of Violet. You are oh. a star. Here's a fun fact about her life, Violet. She was once an extra on Matlock. Stop it right yep. now. Yes. Worked with Andy Griffith? Uh, Are you kidding me? That's so good. That I love so pictures good. like that. I, I just, know. Violet, happy birthday to you. We hope you have just an outstanding day. Yes. I, don't know, I don't know if Violet watches or anyone who knows Violet is watching, but just 105. That just think of, so what, 1919, I guess? Yes. Um, what? Just to even say that out loud is so remarkable to think about. The, the things in history that, that are experienced correct that are just changed. that are part of her personal history. Yeah. Remarkable. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Violet. Sure, you could stop watching now, but let's be honest, you want to see more. So click some of those links or better yet, go ahead and tap subscribe. That way you'll catch more content from Local 12.